Hey gang, we are back at Rose Hill Cemetery and we are at the Foreman Mausoleum here. We're picking up the story where we left off and we have our friend, Britton. Everybody loves Britton. Everybody Hello, likes man. Mike. Britton's like Michael Jordan on this channel. They said, bring him back, so we did. Britton has a lot of information for us and we found also a few other things out. There's really two connections that we found to Aleister Crowley between the Foreman family they're not direct, but they're pretty strong indirect contacts. Now, the first is, let's bring in a woman. Her name was Evangeline Adams. Many of you might know of her. She lived back in the late 1800s. She was young. She had lived in New York. She was an astrologist, and she became pretty famous. She had a lot of followers and she did a lot of collaboration with Aleister Crowley across the pond. Her astrology background helped her basically fill in a lot of blanks for him in a book, a manifesto he put out on astrology. And he actually was the ghostwriter for a lot of her books. So they collaborated a lot. But let's go back to when Evangeline was young, 1893, we go back to the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago, 1893. We all know how famous Devil in the White City, H.H. H. Holmes, brought everybody across the world here, good and bad, and she was here, and she was running around giving astrology and advice and maybe seances with a lot of the rich North Shore families, which include the Foremans, the Foremans, the Steels, the Shumway, there's all these names, and we're, Britain's gonna talk a little bit about it. But she, back in her younger days, that's where she got connected to the, these families in this area. Now, later in life, where she really became famous in New York, she had one big folly was during, just before the Great Depression, she predicted, you know, everyone was like, stocks are going up. And she said, oh, stocks are gonna go to the heavens. And then of course we had the crash days later. So she didn't look so good. She was kind of downhill from there. She did get arrested three times. And on the third time, this is for fortune telling, which was illegal. The judge actually liked her because she looked at the judge's son's birth data and started telling the judge in court all about his son. And he's like, wow, you're amazing. I like you. And he like acquitted her. And anyway, she goes off and she continues to do her thing. So the connection there with her is to the wives, the daughters. We have the three sons, Oscar, was it um, Henry Elvin, is it? Edwin. Edwin. And their wives, she was running around with them and also the daughters of the foremans. And in that, the foremans, the family was giving a lot of money to her and thus indirectly conduit to Aleister Crowley. But I think the more intriguing connection is, and I'll let Britton talk about it, relates to, well, a woman that the, the grandson, under Oscar, it was his son, Gerhard Jr., had an affair with, many affairs with. Nanette Frau Shumway. Um, okay, to start off with her, she came over as an immigrant from France, uh, 1890s, late 1890s. And she gets established well here during the 1900 to early 1910s. Um, Gerhard was a romantic interest with hers at this point, And she ended up mm, meeting another man. She met another man and she got married uh, my connections directly to her here in Chicago, uh, a wedding certificate. And that's where she takes on the name Shumway. Um, I haven't been able to get too much on the fella she married, who I believe his name was William Crosby Shumway. But uh, she takes on the name Shumway and for a brief period of time in the late 19 teens, her and Gerhard Foreman Jr., even though he's not the son of, but we refer to him as Gerhard Jr. now, uh, him and her broke off. She, uh, she ended up getting back in tune with Gerhard in the early 1920s when he was already married and um, 
and she had an affair. She was having an affair with him, but she was really with Aleister Crowley. Yeah. And then they have a baby. She had a baby of Aleister Crowley's. Yeah, she had a baby with Crowley. They're pumping Gerhard Jr. for money, right? Yeah. Because he had a heart condition. Mm -hmm. What was happening there? Well, supposedly he was. He still stayed in tune with Miss Sh uh, with Miss Frau Shumway. Gerhard Sformann's first wife, Beatrice, found some type of letter or some type of correspondence between him and his old mistress, and this stirred up problems between him and his wife, uh, which led to him divorcing his first wife. Uh, at this point, after his divorce from his first wife, is when he started to develop uh, he started to develop health problems. Either before or after he divorced his first wife, he got back into contact with Shumway and Shumway, uh, Shumway started bleeding him, bleeding him money. I have found proofs of co uh, coffers and loans that were made out from the, uh, the Foreman Bank, which midway through the 1920s becomes the first national bank. It was actually the Foreman Brothers Bank, okay. which then became First National Bank. So there was a lot of Foreman money going to her and Crowley. Yeah. And they had that kid together. I mean, his most important mistress. But uh, she was referred to as the, the Scarlet Woman. The Scarlet okay. Woman. Yeah, anybody going and digging into that. But, uh, okay. So anyway, we've got two major connections. We've got the Evangeline with Crowley, with uh, Foreman. So many uh, the of Foreman, the Foremans. The Foremans the and some of these Adams. other rich families uh, post and during or post the World's Columbian mm -hmm. Exposition. She was private medium to the rich families and the right, wives. And right, right. Yeah, so at this all that time, money, spirituality is... All that know, money is going out to her. And, and then we have that connection to Gerhard Jr. So what we're going to try and do now is we're going to try and have a peek inside because... Britain thinks there are others in there. Possibly, we, we won't know, but we're we're gonna we're gonna give it a go. Not sure if the equipment's gonna work, so let's give it a go. Let's do it. Now you can just kind of imagine where ghost hunters or ghost tellers would get, you know, intrigued by this. This right. is a pretty imposing mausoleum. Yeah. And up until, oh, I would say 10 or 15 years ago, there was a series of locks and padlocks on here. Right. One of which was just a great big heart-shaped lock. Um, that's part of the ghost story, that the chains rattle on the anniversary and that steam and mist comes out. Right. Pretty imposing. Built to withstand much. Here's yeah, this is up. this is a solid structure. Yeah. Well, we saw these vents here, and we're gonna see. We're gonna go through one of those holes and see what we can see. All right, gang. We we had no success behind those holes. There is a concrete wall. There's a barrier, so we were unable to get any look inside we're going to do some other exploring here but anyway to close episode two here out made some great connections here there's going to be another episode after this we're going to talk more about this family in the meantime uh, you had a shout out or two you yeah yeah trish and deb big time thank you ladies from the bottom of my heart some awesome stuff and we're just in a few you know in a matter of a few days we uh oh my goodness so much content uh, my first shout out, of course, God rest her soul, Cemetery Lady Helen. Helen Slar. Uh, thanks to you. I know where she's buried. I right. never knew all these years. But uh, thanks to Helen. Also, thanks to authors Ursula Bielski, from the bottom of my heart. Also, Miss Joan Pomerank, who is the head of the uh, Chicago Architecture Commission. Um, Joan wrote pretty good book about this back in the late 90s and then Ursula a lot of her ghost stories uh, Ursula also kind of dived into the Gerhardt story and it was one that uh, you know we uh, one that brought us out here to kind of tie up cool and get to the bottom of so stay tuned for the next one we are going to do one more and we're going to dive a little bit into the Leopold and Loeb story because of course one of the daughters here her son was Nathan Jr. Leopold and he's pretty infamous. They're all I, here. I did a part one at the well if you go way way back to my first videos and it's pretty brutal production I'm embarrassed to say but I did a Bobby Franks 
but we're going to get a little more in depth into the story and talk about the Leopold connection to the foreman. So stay tuned for that. Be nice.